In the summer of 1999, Vladimir Vasilyev brought the first group of his students and friends to Russia. These courageous Canadians, Americans, and Europeans came to Moscow to meet and train with the most remarkable man, Mikhail Repko, the teacher of Vladimir Vasilyev and a true master of fighting. Mikhail met us at the airport and took us directly to his gym for the first of his unforgettable classes. Mikhail is now instructing his students to work individually with each one of us to help and to get to know everyone in the process to avoid injuries and have a good time. This training class that Mikhail took us to is set up for his friends and some of his colleagues. Training for the special units is held at a different facility in a completely different setting. The foreign group that went to Russia in the following summer of the year 2000 had an opportunity to visit these pets facilities and go through the obstacle course. Even in this mostly civilian class, we were amazed to see how well Mikhail's students move and how effective their work and explanations were. We asked Mikhail to show us some basic movements and he's starting with what he calls a basic demonstration with one of his students. Alex is the first brave volunteer from our group who wants to feel the moves on his body. Every person who ever watched Mikhail on video or live had doubts on how these moves would work on himself, especially the psychic energy component of his work. We all observed how our friend Alex, who has extensive martial arts background and knows how to fight, was flying around and falling, getting up, falling down, and laughing. People were even more intrigued then. Next, Randy wanted to experience this. Mikhail immediately pointed out Randy's tension at the hips. And now Mikhail's work was directed towards relaxing the hips and other tense and restricted areas. Randy is one of the most powerful men in Canada. Without any anabolic drugs, he was bench pressing 550 pounds. He weighs well over 200 pounds. This strong back manipulation up in the air was really amazing. So quick and effortless, just part of the regular work for Mikhail. Tension is the main cause of injuries. By pushing on the tense areas of the body in different positions, Mikhail was loosening up the restrictions and releasing the tension. Mikhail was explaining that he was working very carefully only according to what the student is ready to handle. Randy is a very thorough man and does not take things for granted. It was especially convincing to see him go through this work. We're with you, Randy. <laughs> Training sessions with Mikhail contain three components. Demonstrations, practice, and discussions. There are several fairly long demonstrations in classes the goal is to let a student choose the moves that he likes, the moves that match his own nature. Mikhail does not impose a fixed technique or a movement pattern. You pick out what you can 
and then it becomes your own natural movement. Then you practice it, but not in order to memorize, but to understand it further. In the real confrontations, these will be the moves that you will apply, your own invincible weapon that no one can take away from you. When the physical practice begins, Mikhail works individually with each student. He makes the student change and benefit physically by relaxing him and going through the new moves. His personal contact makes the student experience the new, more powerful states of mind and energy. <laughs> from hurting me. This guy would have severely hurt me if I'd have been any more uh, aggressive than I was. Thanks very much. The next part of training session was working individually with Michael's students. Sergei is one of the top students and a colleague of Mikhail a famous operative of many special military operations, responsible for several highest risk successful missions. He is now working with our tall and fit friend David from Florida. Here is a good example of nonverbal communication where movements and facial expressions relay the messages. With a series of manipulations, Sergei is working towards the same goal as Mikhail, trying to relax the partner. He's stretching the muscles, shaking up, twisting, and applying pressure to let David feel where the freedom of movement is lacking and how to achieve it. He is sharing his own image of being soft and relaxed and gradually making David feel that way too. From the first moments of training, when we saw the people going down on the floor, we were wondering if mats are ever used in the Russian system. It is more recommended to work on the bare ground. This, on one hand, is the way the real confrontations take place. And on the other hand, falling on the floor really makes you relax. You quickly learn how to keep your body fluid and smooth. Moreover, hitting the floor in a way is like taking a punch on the body. When you learn to fall easily on a hard surface, you're also able to adapt to strikes and to reduce your fear of strikes. Here's our Simon from Colorado receiving his share of floor contact. Mikhail has a fairly high rank in this pet's unit. He is currently active so we have only a general description of his work. Mikhail is a tactical commander of a Spets division 
involved in counter-terrorist operations and armed criminal neutralization, a commander of hostage rescue teams, and an author of a textbook on tactics of special operations. The Russian system for Mikhail was the way of life. He was personally trained since childhood by one of the remaining Stalin's personal bodyguards. Mikhail was sent on spets assignments at the age of 15. Ever since, he has been continuously involved with the highest risk military and civil missions. He has also been training the Spetsnaz Rapid Reaction Force and the top government Spets divisions. Just recently, Mikhail has returned from war. As many other professionals in his line of work, he does not like to talk about it or about himself. His incredible skill in the martial art and in every other aspect of life speaks for itself. Here is John's turn to experience the hands-on training. Mikhail is explaining that there is tension in John's hips. John says that this is the result of over 200 parachute jumps during his airborne service in the U.S. Army. Mikhail continues that tension makes the legs less mobile, while relaxing the hips and keeping the legs slightly bent minimize the chances of breaking them. Mikhail's demonstration of how easy it is to throw a person off balance. You just have to know where to apply pressure. You should work softly with the partner. Do not use force, just make him understand. explanation here is as soon as one freezes a position he loses the movement once the continuity is lost the person becomes vulnerable I'm a competitive wrestler wrestling coach for almost 30 years and I'm used to working body dynamics I'm used to people's motion how to work against it and with this this guy isn't using any force at all it, it, it's as though he anticipates every move that you have to do and attacks your structural support for it before you have a chance to really utilize it. It eliminates anything you can do. The best thing you can do is to lose, keep your hips, maintain a little body position, and in a 